Thank you, Mary Lou. And gee, don't I feel self-conscious about my hands right now. <laughs> it's my great pleasure to talk to you today about the dirt on share farming. I firstly, though, want to just share a bit of my story in regards to the farm that I am now on. Many, many years ago, over 30 in fact, my husband and I made the decision that we wanted to move to the country and bring our children up and have a, a life away from the city. A city, in fact, Brisbane, where we both grew up. Neither of us have had any farming experience. Now, all these years later, we came to a point where we'd grown our children and we wanted a productive farm. After information gathering, because I believe that's one of the very important things that you have to do before you make those emotional and economic decisions, we chose first to put in um, farm forestry in the back of the farm, and then olives, a thousand olive trees around the house. While they were growing, because I'm a gardener, I trialled um, green tea and it was my first experience in producing a product, selling it, marketing it, and understanding the needs of the people that I hope to become my serious customers. Now we're in our seventh year of producing Obiobi olive oil. We have nine green teas and olive leaf teas with a variety of ingredients added to those. I just want to say to you that through that journey, about three years ago at a networking meeting, I met a guy and he had a dryer. I'm very interested in large. So he was very kind enough to come to our farm and build a really big solar dryer. That really allowed our tea growing and producing business to take a big leap we now are able to, to dry a wide range of leaves and are moving into other areas as well. Now to the share farming bit. Over a year ago, I was very fortunate enough to work in the community organisation up at Mullaney, and it came to be my part in that organisation to interview and work with people who were long-term unemployed. There were eight jobs available for these people, over a hundred of them came forward wanting positions in rural enterprise, some sort of work on the land. A lot of those people had experience, but there was nothing available for them to gain employment through that way. There were two of those rounds, and again, another group, over a hundred, eight jobs, not enough jobs to go around. That was the defining moment for me. I had the great joy of, of having good friends, and with them we went on a path of research and information gathering, so that just recently we completed the, uh, two documents, one on share farming, mostly desktop research, but a second document that encompassed our part of a wider research deal, and that was in regards to the, the whole food chain. We were talking to farmers and growers in our Sunshine Coast region. Now we had the tools to understand how to work with people to allow the dream to become a reality. Since the publishment of those books, we've now uh, moved steps closer, I believe. We're working on an educational package, we're working on networking. These are all issues that farmers that we spoke to needed. One of the more important issues, however, is a distribution centre. Not like the sort from ages past, not like the sort that we're used to understanding about what happens in Brisbane, but an online in distribution centre. One that can connect the growers, the processors, to the consumers, the customers, but more than that. One that gives information to growers about what sort of things to grow this particular season at this particular time. One that allows people to connect with their information and hand that to the growers and vice versa. At the same time, through this journey, I've understood that a lot of people who want to grow have been unable to do so in gaining hands-on grassroots experience. I spoke to a couple of people in my own Obiobi Valley, 
and I am now a proud participant in a new community farming group, and we call ourselves OBOB Black Soil Social Club. Yep, there's a lot of social part in that whole community garden atmosphere, and it's been a real joy in watching the progress of this group. We are that close to getting our first lot of seedlings in the ground, but to get to that point, we've had people give us tanks, give us bits of wood, give us wire netting so that we can take in a piece of ground and grow stuff. We've had a local farmer come and slash the area, another farmer till the soil. We've had someone from permaculture come and tell us the best way to move forward. It's been a wonderful journey of participation, sharing, and understanding that no one is actually the leader, we're all just parts of the whole. These are all just little steps to that final journey that we hope to make towards share farming, which again is going to be a collaboration between parties, hoping in the new year that with working with Missions Australia, we'll be able to organise a model where people will be able to be supported. There will be farming mentors. We have such a wealth of information in a wide range of community people. People really want to give that information, but how? We're wanting to use that farming experience and assist those new growers. We want to have business experience, again, that business mentoring model. There are community organisations, not only in the gardening area, but a wide variety of, of other expert areas. So on this really interesting, exciting journey, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to hope that perhaps by the end of next year, that not only can I tell you about the journey leading up to share farming, but that I'll be able to tell you about the journey leading from share farming to the future. Thank you so very much for listening to me today, and I look forward to speaking to you some, sometime, some of you sometime later. Thank you again. Mm -hmm.